Well, hello and welcome everyone. My name is Celeste Harrison and on behalf of National Geographic Education, I'm so excited to see you all this morning and to welcome you to another episode of Explore Classroom. Here at National Geographic, we believe in the power of exploration and wonder to change our world. And our explorers are cutting edge scientists, amazing researchers, powerful storytellers, adventurers, filmmakers, photographers, and so much more out there doing just that, making change and inspiring wonder. And these Explorer Classroom events uh, invite those explorers here to give short lessons and run extended Q&As with students just like you all around the world. This fall, we're hosting Explorer Classroom for ages nine to 14 every Thursday at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern time plus plenty of other cool events you can learn about on our website. I wanna start this morning by saying that we're very, very grateful to our friends at LEGO for supporting this event and for promoting exploration and species conservation with their new LEGO Friends kit. And today, the main event, we're very, very lucky to be joined by Rosa Mira Guyen. Rosa Mira is an award-winning conservationist who has made it her personal mission to protect cotton top tamarinds. Cotton top tamarinds are these amazing, adorable little primates that are found only in Northern Colombia. You're gonna hear all about it in a minute. Rosamira is gonna teach us about cotton tops and conservation and her community. Before she does that, I do wanna acknowledge that we're joined today by students from all over the world. So if you hear your country, your state, your school group, go ahead and give us a cheer wherever you may be. Today, our students are representing Algeria, Arizona, California, Canada, Connecticut, the Dominican Republic, Egypt, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Indiana, India, Indonesia, Ireland, Kentucky, Maryland, Michigan, New Hampshire, New Mexico, New York, Texas, Virginia, Washington, Wisconsin, and probably many more places too. I wanna to give shout outs to Arbor Academy, to Diana, downtown Montessori, Echo Canyon K-8, Freya, Miss Fry and the Gems World Academy team, Harvest Academy, Getz Elementary, Mr. Clancy Science Lab, Mr. Lito's sixth grade, St. Xavier's in Delhi, Ms. Garcia's class, Mrs. Hoffman's STEM, Mrs. Glad's class, Mr. Ivira's class, Miss Kroll's fifth grade, Miss Slavin's sixth grade, the Ogin Jenner School in Chicago, Oak Cliff Elementary, Sycamore Trails Elementary, the March Family, and Tully Elementary. And I think that is plenty for me. It's time to turn it over to Rosa Mira for today's Explorer Classroom lesson. Good morning, Celeste. Good morning to everybody around the world who's joining us. I am so excited and so happy to be here today talking about what I love the most. These very cute cotton top tamarinds and uh, love to connect with Nat Geo explorers, Nat classrooms, and future explorers, I'm sure, that um, will help us make this planet a better place. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, and start my presentation today. So, this is the cutest monkey ever, the little cotton top tamarinds. Um, you may look at it in the, maybe in a big screen and think, wow, that's a big animal. Oh, it's not. It's very little, just about the size of a squirrel, right? It's just about this. It's a, actually a one pound monkey. And I'm going to uh, share with you three stories that uh, talk about what we do here in Colombia to protect this amazing cute little monkey. Uh, three stories. So the first story I'm going to share with you is the story of Savage. Savage is a female cotton top tamarind, and she is the dominant female in her family groups. See, cotton tops live just like us humans in family groups. So mom, dad, and kids, older kids, younger kids, and but the mommies are the really um, uh, the ones that make all decisions and. Uh, lead their family. So they need to be strong. They usually have a strong, we could say bad temper, kind of, but they need to be like that because they uh, tell their family where to stay safe, um, how to move around through the forest. They teach everything to the kids and they lead their family. So they need to be really strong and powerful. 
and savage is. And she probably learned that from her mom, Tamara, the, the beautiful female cotton top you see on the screen, was a very famous female. She was on the cover of an, an amazing movie that was made about Colombia's biodiversity um, a few years back. And Tamara was one uh, of the animals that we studied in her native habitat in the forest of Northern Colombia for 17 years, which is not very common because cotton tops usually live on average seven years because in the forest they have a lot of predators and, and so that is uh, their usual life. But Tamara was so strong and so leader that she was able to make it through 17 years and keep her family together. And she was one of the cotton tops we studied that has taught us the most that we know about uh, cotton top tamarins. So uh, Savage probably got a lot of her uh, toughness, if we should say, <laughs> from her mom. And she also teaches that to uh, all of her kids. Now, this guy here, it's called Ray, and he is um, Savage's uh, partner. And uh, he on the other side is a very cool, easygoing, smooth guy, right? It's good, good combination with Savage and Ray. Uh, but Ray has a very important role in the family, and it is to carry the little transmitter that you see in the back, like a little backpack. Uh, that is a transmitter that sends a signal out that our team uh, receives with that antenna that my friend Felix here is holding in his hand. Uh, they go around the forest, tune in on, on that signal and pick it up and they can find Ray Savage and everybody in the family and sit down and, and take notes and learn uh, what they do, what they need. That's how come we have learned so much about cotton tops. You can see Francie here uh, 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 holding a, an iPad. They collect all of the information in that iPad and then we have it available to know what they eat, um, how much time they spend doing different things, how many uh, animals are in the family, and all that fun stuff that uh, scientists collect to learn from the species. Now, this is their office. Can you imagine having an office in the forest? That's what they do every day. They come in, find the study groups, sit down for a while, take notes, and it is cool to be in the forest all the time as an office, but sometimes it's, it's hard because it's hot. It's hot all year round here in Colombia. We just have dry season and rainy season. So it's hot. You sweat a lot. And there's, a, you know, bugs, mosquitoes and so on. But we love that. We explorers love that, love to be in nature and especially learn from what we have around us to help protect and conserve all of these amazing species. Now, it is very important for us to have the transmitters on the animals because as you can see, this is a one pound monkey that hangs out 30 to 40 feet above the ground. I don't know if you have spotted them, but there they are. So for us, it's very important to be able to put these transmitters and find the animals in the forest. Besides, cotton tops are very elusive. So it is not easy to see them unless you have this technical uh, 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 devices that help you find the animals in the wild. Now, this guy is the older brother. His name is Lee. And you may hear that little chirping. It's actually a language that cotton tops talk. They communicate with each other just as, as we do, you know, with different calls. In this case, Lee here, it seems like he's watching up for some predators that may be around, hovering around, uh, and probably looking for lunch and a cotton top would be a good option for them. Uh, it's usually um, raptor birds that live in this forest or boa snakes that also uh, feed on cotton tops. But that is nature. That is part of the normal balance of, of the forest. But Lee is always checking out to see what's going on and then calling out for everybody to stay safe. And Savage, as the mom says, OK, let's go this way. Let's find this shelter here. And then they stay protected as much as, um, as they can. This one here is the younger sister called Angie. And Angie is here uh, enjoying a very tasty fruit, many of which are produced in this forest. And that's actually what cotton tops feed from. They feed from most more than 40 different uh, fruits that grow in this forest. And you know what? It's, it is very important for them to eat that. And then when they go around, their home territory and poop, like, you know, 
then all of those seeds that they eat become new trees. And that is actually why cotton tops are very important in the forest because they help spread out all the seeds of the fruits they eat in the forest and new trees grow and the forest keeps healthy and keeps growing. So that's why they need to stay in the forest and help make this beautiful landscape stay healthy and, and good for all the animals. Now, they also eat uh, insects as well. You can see here Andy eating some kind of yucky little insect, but that's part of their diet too. That's actually the protein they have. Um, and not only insects, but they also uh, feed from sap from the trees. Like when a woodpecker comes and kind of picks on a bark, and then it starts bleeding a little uh, uh, sap, which is very sweet and high energy. So usually uh, when the dry season comes, then uh, cotton tops eat a lot of insects and they eat a lot of sap. Now here in Colombia, we don't have the four seasons that some other uh, countries have. We only have dry season, no rain, and rainy season. It's always hot and it's always uh, lush and green. It, we are in the tropics. And this is one of the little babies that were, was born this year earlier, about April or May. Um, he and his sibling are now learning to move around. He was a little stressed. It's kind of tough to see them be a little stressed, but they need to learn how to move on their own uh, when they grow about 10 weeks old. And even though he lives a little stressed, you know, it's part of their growth. Just like us, when we learn how to walk, we learn how to run and do things ourselves. Cotton tops learn everything from their parents, just as we do. And everybody helps uh, raise them. And that's when they go away and make their own family. That's how they are good parents for their kids. Very much like us humans. I'm always very surprised to see how many similarities we have with these very cute little monkeys. And something else that is very amazing is the fact that within our big planet, that little red dot that you see on the screen is the only place on earth where you will find cotton top tamarins in the wild. This is the country of Colombia in South America. You can see a little insert of the country itself. It's not even in the whole country. It's just a little piece in the north side of the country. That's the only place on earth you will find cotton top tamarins in the wild. That's amazing, isn't it? It's a very unique little animal and it's us. This is the place where I was born and raised as well. So that's one of the reasons why I love working to protect my biodiversity in my country's uh, forest and natural resources. Unfortunately, many years of bad management, I would say, uh, have brought this big threat to cotton tops. They're losing their home. They have been losing their home for a while. People cut uh, the trees to put cattle ranching, agriculture, um, local communities uh, need to generate an income and cut trees. And they also hunt cotton tops for the pet trade, which is something that makes me very sad because they take him to their homes, put him in small cages, and they miss their freedom, they miss their family, they miss their food. So those two things are putting cotton tops in the verge of extinction. There's about 7,000 animals left in the wild, which is a very little number for their species, and they are considered uh, critically endangered. That is one step away from being extinct in the wild. That is why the work that I lead here in Colombia focuses a lot on, re on protecting the forest and rebuilding, making new forests. We have worked on that for a very long time, and now we're hoping to continue on planting more trees, working with people so that uh, we can save the forest for cotton top tamarins. Because this forest is not only for the monkeys, there's a lot of other beautiful, amazing species that benefit from our work to protect the forest. Uh, all the birds, all the mammals, all the reptiles, or the insects. So just a beautiful landscape full of life and full of biodiversity. So working to protect the forest for cotton tops also helps us these animals, but not only the animals, it helps us too. Because you know, forests are sponges that save water. And we need water every day. Just think about what it would be a day without water. It would be pretty tough. So forests help us save water have a better climate, and have resources for whenever we need. And that brings me to my second story, because we have done a lot of science for a long time, but science alone is not enough to save a species. 
we need to work with people. That's why I'm sharing today a story of Anna. Anna grew, was born and grew up in a very little community right by the forest where Savage, Ray, and the other family members uh, live. She grew up seeing her family, her relatives, cut trees, use them for fences, for construction, for firewood, and hunting cotton tops and other animals uh, for the pet trade and for consumption. Now, we know that uh, people do this because they need to feed their families. So we came up with this idea and, and met Anna and told Anna, why don't we come up with uh, some new ideas so you guys get other income, not necessarily cutting trees or hunting animals. And she's like, you know, very strong leader, very strong temper, just like Savage, right? I was telling you before. And she called a, a few of her friends in the community. And we started this project that was making, it was about making uh, tote bags with recycled plastic bags. So something that is usually a waste, we turned it into beautiful handbags and artwork that the ladies could sell and generate an income for their families. Can you imagine how many plastic bags we have saved from polluting rivers and forests and now are becoming beautiful artwork and, you know, hands, uh, bags that we can use for going to the grocery store, the beach, or even for um, our lunch boxes. So soon enough, after starting this project, Anna started traveling around Colombia, uh, teaching other women the art of crocheting with recycled plastic bags getting training, learning how to run her small business, go to fairs, uh, talk about her work to protect cotton tops while re uh, recycling plastic that pollutes, and even with the media because she became quite famous when in 2012 they got this, this big, uh, very famous international prize called the Equator Prize. And that gave them a lot of visibility and they were able to begin selling more and more of her products. She was very proud. And with that, with all of the profits from crocheting with recycled plastic bags, Anna was able to build her home. She lives there with the three kids and they're both getting educations, higher educations. And now she has a better living and doesn't need he, she or, or her family to cut trees and hunt animals for the pet trade. And she can do that from home, caring for her family, very close to the forest and not affect the forest. She can, you know, kind of gossip around or, or talk to her colleagues and just nicely uh, crochet while they're staying at their home in their community, which is a very great advantage. And now some of her uh, Anna's bags are in the runways of some famous designers here in Colombia that are using them or in the shelves of you know, uh, high-end stores that are combining recycled plastic bags with other materials. So it's been really amazing um, to see Anna's story evolve because of the work we're doing together to protect the monkeys. And not only that, there's a few other of Anna's colleagues that make these beautiful plush toys <laughs> um, that also uh, are to send the message of not having cotton tops as pets. If you want a cotton top, you can have one of these plushes um, or like they're doing now this year, they're making Christmas uh, tree ornaments, you know, little cotton tops with little Santa hats that you can use for your um, uh, Christmas tree and, um, and just uh, also help them uh, have a stable source of income. Some of her relatives, uh, Anna's relatives, work with us uh, propagating trees that we can plant in these areas where we want to grow forests to make it bigger and so cotton tops can have a bigger home and they help us plant the trees and then care for them as they grow and become new forests. So that is very important for our community work. But we know that also we need to work with the younger kids in these communities, Anna's kids and her relatives. And my third and last story is with Nelson. Nelson was one kid we met in one of the communities in another community that is very close to the forest. And when we came to his school to teach kids about cotton tops, because you think it's important. I grew up here in Colombia and I never heard about cotton tops until I visited the local zoo for my first job actually, and realized that I never heard about this amazing species. Well, we wanna change that. So we wanna teach the kids to learn about their biodiversity and we're going to the schools and we met Nelson. Nelson was part of this program, he got to go into the forest and uh, track the monkeys with our team, with Francie and Felix. 
find the monkeys and bring to life all the stories we teach in the classroom. That was really amazing. It was, it was a great uh, way to connect with the stories. And then after that, of course, Nelson was very excited. You can see them in, in the bottom center. And he gathered a few of, of his classmates and created uh, an ecological group we call TT Club. And with that, they started doing things in their community and in their homes, like composting, uh, home gardens, recycling campaigns, um, uh, participating in festivals, uh, talking about cotton tops, creating artwork to generate awareness in their communities about this uh, beautiful monkey. And even Nelson even convinced his teachers to do his uh, last year of high school social work, teaching other kids in other schools about cotton top taverns. He was a very dedicated uh, um, volunteer for Proyecto DT. And it is a beautiful story because 10 years after, Nelson now is 23 years old. He got a technical degree in environmental management and he's now going to school to become an environmental educator. And he, up until recently, he was working in one of the largest zoos in Colombia uh, as an educator assistant, telling people about cotton tops and the beautiful native wildlife of, of Colombia. So those three stories I'm sharing with you today um, show what we're doing. We're doing science, we're saving the forest, we're uh, teaching the new generations of Colombians about our biodiversity of cotton tops, and also helping people in local communities get generate a sustainable income so they don't have to cut trees and hunt animals. Um, we celebrate this with communities every year in the day of the cotton top tamarind with our beautiful mascot Tito there. And it's all about dancing. There's a lot of uh, culture here in Colombia, love to dance, we love to sing. So we make this huge celebration every year that brings the communities and the kids together to celebrate. So this is the work of Proyecto Titi. This is what we do every, uh, every day with a lot of passion and dedication to protect Colombia's cutest for sure, but one of the most endangered uh, primates in the world. I wanna acknowledge our team here in Colombia, all of them very passionate uh, people uh, that every day go to the schools, work with the communities, track the monkeys in the forest, work with the farmers to plant trees. We do this with a lot of love for our cute cotton tops and for nature because it's our biodiversity and it's our responsibility to make sure that it stays for further generations. So I thank you very much guys for listening uh, to, to my stories today. Uh, if you want to learn more, there are resources online that you can always check, projectott.com and our social media. And I would love to stay and answer any questions you may have, any comments or any ideas that, that you can share with us today. Amazing. Well, Rosamira, thank <laughs> you so much. Your work is so inspiring. Your cotton tops are so adorable. Um, th thank you for that <laughs> lesson. It was so much fun. And for Thank folks you. learning along with us, we'd love to see what you do as a result of this. So teachers, maybe you do a follow-up activity or a project or make an awareness campaign or start protecting your own local animals the way Rosamira did. Whatever it may be, all you grown-ups out there, please let us know about your students' work. Um, we're so inspired by it. You can find us on Twitter, at NatGeoEducation, and we use hashtag ExploreClassroom. We can't wait to see all the cool things you're doing. But for right now, it's my very favorite time of the day. It is question time. <laughs> so if you're watching on YouTube, please send us your questions in the chat bar. We record absolutely everything you send us. So please only send your question one time and please let us know who's asking so we can give your student a shout out. If you're up here on screen with me, get those nice loud voices ready. I'll let you know when it's your turn. Our first question today comes to us from Ms. Ladon's class. They're wondering, since cotton tops are endangered, what kind of an effect would there be if they went extinct? Yes, well, every, every animal has a role in their ecosystem. You know, I was telling you about how cotton tops are very important for dispersing seeds that they eat and then poop around while they walk through the forest. So that is a very important role. If cotton tops go extinct, the forest might have trouble um, renewing itself with uh, what cotton tops do. Something else that we um, highlight very much is that cotton tops are probably one species of many that live in this forest. And everything we do to conserve cotton tops 
helps the whole ecosystem. So, so the next question will be, what happens if we lose this ecosystem and we lose the forest? Well, we lose valuable sources of water, we lose uh, the climate stability, we lose resources. When we use them wisely, we can use forest resources for uh, us humans without damaging the whole ecosystem. So if cotton tops go extinct, the forest could be in trouble. And if forests go extinct, many animals would be in trouble and we would be in trouble. So that's why it is important very much to save cotton tops are like a symbol of a whole ecosystem. By saving them, we're saving animals and we're saving ourselves as well. Amazing. Well, our next question was sent in by Madeline. And Madeline is wondering, what do they use to make their houses? Oh, cotton tops. Actually, cotton tops just hang out in the forest all day. They only they are only up uh, at daytime. They get up actually very early. And their life is quite smooth, you know. They find food, breakfast, I would say. They take a nap after that. They play around a little, move somewhere else within their territory and do the same four, five, six times a day. When they go to sleep at night, they have to find a nice big uh, shelter tree and they all curl up like a ball of fur <laughs> and find a nice vine that protects them from night predators, which are usually uh, ocelots or little, little felines that live in the forest. That is what they use for their house. Big trees, uh, areas with lots of vines and they all curl up at night. Never use the same tree if, uh, the, uh, on a consecutive night. They change trees every night. So that's why they need lots of big trees uh, in the forest so they can move around because when they leave that smell, that cotton top smell in the tree, then predators know they were there and might be able to find them. So it's all strategies they use to keep safe as much as they can. So cool. Well, let's visit an on-screen class for our next question. Let's go to Miss Arnoni's grade fours. I see you guys are ready with a question. Go for it. All right, I'm asking to turn your microphone on one more time. Go for it. We got the start and end of that, but the mask muffled you a little bit. Can you, can you help us out, Miss Arnoni, and repeat the question? So he said, do cotton swap cameras have any physical or behavioral adaptation? Oh, what oh. kind of physical and behavioral adaptations? Great okay. question. Yes, they are. Well, they are very well adapted to their ecosystem. I'll tell you a few. They have a uh, very sharp claws that allow them to climb um, in the trees that they move around. They have a long tail that helps them stay balanced. It's not a prehensile tail, but it helps them stay balanced when they jump around from tree to tree or from uh, ranch to ranch, right? And they are also very adapted to the seasons in Colombia, which is only the dry season with no rain and the rainy season with lots of rain. In the dry season, there's not that much fruits coming out of the trees, of course, because there's not too much water. So they eat uh, uh, insects and sap from the trees. All of those are adaptations that they use to stay uh, alive and to stay healthy within their forest and to move around. They are very territorial, just like, uh, like we are with our homes, right? So they also have very sharp teeth and claws to defend their territory against any intruders. So all of those are, oh, one more thing, one more thing. They have a lot of hair, you know, this, they're very fussy. So whenever they wanna intimidate another cotton top trying to invade their territory, they fuss up like that. And at least they believe they become bigger and intimidating to other uh, animals to not go in into their territory. So all those are fun facts about cotton tops that show how well adapted they are uh, to their home. And that is why we need to leave them in their home, which is the forest in, in Northern Colombia. Awesome. Our next question comes to us from fourth graders in Chicago. 
and they're wondering what do male cotton top tamarinds do? What's their role in the family structure? Okay, so the male cotton top is usually helping a lot with caring for the babies because mommy gets tired. She has to carry them and feed them. So the daddy helps carrying them around when mommy's tired. And he also helps teach uh, the babies and everybody in the family to stay safe, to move around, and to care for each other. Uh, sometimes the males, especially the, like the juveniles, before they leave home, they take up a role of also uh, always watching for predators, like Lee was doing in that video I showed you before, and chirping for everybody um, to stay safe. If there's a threat, is there's a, uh, a raptor bird or a boa, you know, he calls the alarm and everybody goes and moves and, and mommy says, okay, let's go this way. Uh, and that is one of their most important role. For us, it is very important because they carry the transmitter that we put on them so we can find them and uh, learn from them and, and just monitor and track them to make sure they're all doing okay. Awesome. Well, let's take our next question from Adam, who's up here on screen with us. Go for it, Adam. Hi, Rosemira. First <laughs> Hi, of all, Adam. Uh, thank you for inviting me to participate. I actually have two questions. Yeah. How long have tamarins existed on Earth, and are they related to humans like other primates? Yeah. So I think I believe the first uh, record of tamarins was at the beginning of the of the twentieth century, um, and that is. The only thing we have with regards to the first sightings of cotton tops. There was one previous research in the, in the 70s that studied a population here in Colombia, but just for a short term. And then uh, our founder, uh, Dr. Ann Savage, who founded Proyecto DT in the mid 80s, she started this study that carries on now that I lead it here in Colombia. So for 30 years. So we have records only probably a little over a hundred uh, years. I'm sure they go way back, but there's no information in it that we can find in books or any sources. That is, that is one thing. Now, uh, not that we know of, you know, we're primates, so there is a relationship and, and you can see that behavior wise, it's very similar to our human families with mom, dad, and groups, the way they care for each other, the way they, uh, uh, they reproduce, they, the way they communicate, the way they live is very similar to us humans, but I'm not sure if, if genetically there is any other uh, link there, like there is, for instance, with chimpanzees or anything. So nothing that has been studied yet or that is known about that relationship beyond uh, behavior, which is very similar to us. Plenty more research to do, so much more to yeah. <laughs> there in the world. I love For it. sure. Well, we've got a DD who is wondering how big are they when they're born? And a related question, Mr. Lido's class is wondering how long can we expect a typical cotton top to live? Yes, okay, so uh, you can see that they're about this size, right? And uh, it's a one pound uh, monkey when they're adults. When they're little, they could be something like this, which is one of the ornaments actually that uh, the artisans make, but you know, they go here on the back. So probably your longest finger could be like the size of them when, when they are just born and then, but they grow fast, you know? So like within a year, they kind of look uh, like adults, but they don't have that much hair in their heads until they become juveniles. So um, that, is, that is about that question. And typically, what we have studied is that they uh, live between, on average, like five to seven years in the wild because, you know, that's their lifespan with predators and all. There has been records of animals in captivity uh, that live up to 20 years because they don't have threats. They don't have issues there. Uh, but in the wild, it's usually seven years, you would say, except for Tamara, which was the mom of Savage, the story that I told you. She lived for 17 years. That is not typical. And she died of natural causes. So she was a very strong survivor, I guess. <laughs> but it's not the typical. So seven years about. Awesome. 
Well, let's take our next question from the Keeney family. Go for it, Cameron. Why do cotton top tamarinds have fluffy hair? Have fluffy hair? Okay, yeah, we assume it is because they use it as a way to intimidate uh, intruders within their territory. They actually puff it up really, really hard and it, it looks like, you know, electrocyzed <laughs> animal. And that makes them look bigger. That's something they use so that other animals don't get within their territory. That is uh, what, from our studies, we have been able to learn about their use of the hair and, and their puffing up like that. Awesome. Well, we've got Ms. Vero's class joining us from Texas today. Ms. Vero, who should we call on? Hi, good morning. Um, I'd like to call on Erin Fardo. All right, let me find that microphone. That may be Erin's iPhone? Yes. Got it. All right, give me one second. All right, ask away, Erin. Oh, so my question is why deforestation is affecting the cotton top tamarind so much and what we can do to, to stop deforestation? Okay, great, great questions, Erin. Um, Two, two answers for your, for your first question. Uh, they are affected by deforestation because uh, forest is their only home in Northern Colombia. And it is like if you were in your house, you know, you have a house with bedrooms, kitchen. Imagine that little by little, everything in your home was taken out and it was all confined to maybe one bedroom and the kitchen. And then, you know, there's so much people you can fit on those two places. So if you don't have a home, if you don't have a home to expand or to live on, most likely you will be eaten by an animal or not being able to survive. That's why we need not only what is left now, which is the kitchen and the bedroom, we need to rebuild the whole house for the cotton tops so that they can, um, so that they can uh, live and make it into the long term. But sometimes we have forests and that are missing trees. For instance, some of the loggers in, in the rural communities cut the large trees. Those large trees are the ones that cotton tops use for shelter at night. So even if you have a forest and you don't have the large trees, then cotton tops don't have a good shelter and they will get eaten at night. So it's not only cutting the whole forest, sometimes it hurts as that when you cut just the big trees and you think you're not you know, hurting because you're leaving the forest there, but no, for cotton top, there's a big issue to have this big forest. So that is, that is uh, the two questions. Now, what you can do, oh, you can do a lot. You can do a lot for the forest and the ecosystems. You, first of all, you learn, like you guys are learning today about what, uh, why it's important to keep the forest. Then you can become active and participate in reforestation or restoration, planting trees, caring for those trees and being responsible with uh, your, your behavior with regards to environmental issues, consuming less plastic, consuming less resources, throwing out less uh, waste. There's a lot of things we can do from home, uh, but for saving the forest, you can either plant forests in your area and help your uh, uh, nature around you to flourish and to stay healthy, or also donate to organizations like us for us to plant more trees in the home of cotton tops if you wanna specifically help cotton tops here in Colombia. So those are, are, are things you can do to uh, help uh, the forest that cotton tops need. Amazing. Well, let's go to Ms. V's five sixes for their question. Ms. V, what can we answer for you? Um, good morning, Rosamira. So one of our students asked how many cotton top tamarins die every year and how many repopulate uh, re every year? Okay, <laughs> so our, our records and our studies and our research shows that each family um, has one set of twins every year, just once a year, only the mommy, uh, two babies are born, and 80% uh, of them, uh, or 70 or 80% of them make it to adult, to adults. Some of them just die as just natural causes. And um, that is the, uh, the percentage. So um, on the forest that we work, the populations have remained stable somehow. So some die, some, um, some uh, grow every, every day, but it's for natural causes. We're 
staying pretty protected from hunters in the area. But that's what that's the information we have. So uh, right now there is about 7,000 cotton tops left in Colombia. And that number is very little compared to the amount of forest that there is. So we wish we would have a hundred times more of that if we had more forest to protect the monkeys. Awesome. We've got a third grader named Brianna who is wondering if there's other types of tamarinds too? Yes, there are. Thank you for that question. Yes, cotton tops are one of about, I believe the number is 16 different species of tamarinds uh, that only live in South America. So tamarinds are only found in South America in countries like Colombia, Brazil, uh, Peru, Ecuador, lots of the Amazon, but cotton top tamarinds are only found in Colombia. Out of those 16 different species of tamarinds, uh, cotton tops are only found in that, this little corner of Colombia. And I think they're the coolest, not that I'm biased or anything, but they have the coolest hair of, uh, of all of them. They're actually different. Just, just about the same in size, but different colors, different hairdos, and this is the coolest, I think. <laughs> awesome. We've got Dahlia, a fourth grader, who says that you've mentioned how cotton tops are, are pet traded. Are there mm -hmm. any laws out there that, that ban mm -hmm. people from having monkeys as pets? Yes, they are. there are laws. That is an illegal activity. Here in Colombia, it is illegal to export them outside of Colombia, but it's also illegal to trade with them for the pet illegal pet trade in Colombia. Uh, the issue is that it's not, you know, fully enforced. Um, it's a tough issue to to handle. Authorities, unfortunately, here in Colombia in the different regions, are not enforcing enough, and people need to generate an income. So sometimes they go about illegal activities because they need to feed their families and, or they're connected to this illegal business. So that is why we do so many community programs with the farmers planting trees, with the artisans making the little plushies and making the beautiful eco mochilas because we want them to have another opportunity to make a living and not have to hunt the cotton tops. But that is a constant fight uh, we, we have and it's a big part of our education programs to, uh, you know, make the kids aware that never, never, ever to buy or hunt or participate in, in the pet trade because it, it hurts the cotton tops very much and it ends up hurting us as well. Such an important lesson. Well, we've got yeah. Dwyer, another fourth grader, who knows that there's about 7,000 cotton tops out there right now. And they're excited to, with their class, help you protect them but they're wondering how many cotton tops should be the goal. How many would, would need to be out there for them to no longer be at risk of extinction? Yes, that is, that is a number that we're still trying to figure out, but um, we are getting ready to do a third count of monkeys in, in the year 2022. And we will see what has been happening within the last 10 years. That will help us uh, know and make those numbers. But at least what we want to see is enough forest. If, if we were able to have 10% at least of the area where cotton tops used to be, if we were able to get 10% of the forest that used to be there safe and interconnected, I think we will do like, whew, we can <laughs> relax a little more now. Just with that little, it should be enough for enough monkeys to stay healthy and also to be able to give animals a home, but also people opportunities to make a sustainable living. Just find that balance. We all need to survive. People need to plant their crops. We need to eat, but we can do it in a different way that everybody has a place and then we can live in harmony with our little monkeys in the forest and us in our farms or in our homes. Amazing. Well, Rosamira, do you have any advice for all the young explorers out there with us today? Yes, of course. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. And, and uh, two, um, three messages, I would say. If you're interested, if you love cotton tops as much as we do and you're interested in supporting our cause, a great way to do so is to go online and you know use these little guys for your Christmas tree if you, do, if you celebrate Christmas or give them as presents. And that is a great way to help these communities like Anna and everybody that is working to 
uh, make a living sustainably and protect cotton top tamarinds. Uh, you can learn more and spread the word about the work we do because we need a lot of people to know and support our work with donations and with their help. But if you, if you feel like you're far away from Colombia and you want to help, you can also help around you. There's, I'm sure there's areas within your community, within your country that would benefit from you uh, uh, becoming active and planting trees, reducing waste, recycling, and just creating awareness, you know, telling people about what they can do to make this all a better world. Become active. If you are motivated by it, go for it. And, and you will have it. Even if you sometimes you think that you alone can't do much of a difference, you do. There's probably a lot of people like you that are doing things around the world and we're all becoming stronger. And um, we, can, we can win this fight and make our forests be healthy again, make our animals have a home and us be healthy as well in the future. So I'll encourage you to become active in your community, in your school, in your neighborhood, in your country and do something uh, for the wildlife and uh, natural places that are around your home. And if you want to help, you can you can know how to contact us and continue continue connected with the Nat Geo Explorers classrooms. You learn a lot and you'll find ideas to help for sure. Amazing. Well, thank you again, Rosamira. This has been so much fun. Everyone out there, you can check out our Explorer classroom schedule plus many many more free educational resources at natgeoed.org. Um, I hope to see you all again soon. I want to wish everyone a happy Native American Heritage Month. I want to say another thank you to our friends at LEGO for supporting this event and species conservation around the world. Um, and I want to thank our students for their thoughtful questions, their teachers for making cool stuff like this mm. happen. And after this incredible patience and quiet and thoughtfulness from all of our students right at the end here, I'm going to ask to turn everyone's microphones on. Let's get nice and loud and say goodbye and thank you to Rosamira. Ready? Go ahead and unmute. Thank you. Thank you.